All right, so do you know how to solve this simple math problem? Well, if you don't know, don't worry about it. I will teach you exactly how to solve this problem. But let's see how well you do with it. So we have a fraction 3 fourths, and this is equal to another fraction, 27x over what denominator? So we're looking for the denominator of this second fraction in order for this entire thing to be true. But uh, what we have here is a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. Again, uh, these answers are the possible answers for the denominator in this second fraction. So A is 9, B is 36x, C is 36, and D is 108x. Now, feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, here is our problem. We have a fraction, uh, 3 fourths, and it's equal to another fraction. Of course, we have this variable here, which is going to make this problem interesting. But we need to figure out what the denominator is right here in order for this entire statement to be true. And let's take a look at the right answer. The correct answer is B, 36x. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of basic ratios and proportions, or really, this is just what we, in math, what we call a proportion. Now, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even know what you're talking about, but I got this thing right. Well, that is fantastic as well. You just may not be familiar with the terms, but if you kind of reason through this and use some logic, that is fantastic. But let's go ahead and uh, get into the actual mathematics. So here again is our problem. Now, let's suppose you are a math student and some of you uh, watching this video, I'm sure, have to still take math exams, which is not that fun, especially if you don't know how to answer a question. So if you encounter a question, especially a multiple choice question, and you don't know what to do, well, what should you do? Well, if you're saying, I know what I'm going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am a certified professional expert in guessing, well, that is what you should do. Just take a guess, but to hopefully... You know, you're just not going to make a random guess. You're like, oh, I'd like the letter A today. You know, you're just going to circle something. Try to, you know, reason through and see what kind of logic that you might be able to, you know, employ to take a good guess. But uh, if you just don't know, take a random guess. Now, uh, just one exception to this uh, kind of guessing thing. If you're taking an exam like the SAT or ACT exam, and there's probably other exams as well, you could get penalized for a wrong answer. So, you know, just be careful there. But uh, obviously, the best strategy uh, to solve any math problem is to simply know the math. All right, so we have a fraction, 3 fourths, and we have this other fraction over here, 27x over something. Now, what do you think this problem is asking us? Well, whatever this fraction is, it's the same as this fraction, or this fraction here, 3 fourths, is the same as this fraction. So really what we have to do is figure out the denominator right here such that when we plug it into this fraction and if we reduce this uh, fraction or simplify it, we get back to the fraction 3 fourths. There's a couple different ways we can think about it, but let's just take a look at these answers, right? So if we plugged in 9 right here, for example, into our denominator and uh, uh, just kind of check this work, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 27x over 9. Well, 9 goes into 27, 3, so this will be 3x. Is 3x equal to 3 fourths? Well, it doesn't appear uh, uh, so. So, you, you know, you could just kind of use some common sense here. And a lot of you might say, well, you know, 36x is the obvious answer, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I don't know what a proportion is or any of that stuff, but 36x is the right answer because 27 over 36, uh, 9 goes into 27, 3. And 9 goes into 36, 4. So this fraction reduces down to 3 fourths. Okay, so these two numbers right here 
uh, 36x and 36, and we have to have a 36 in the denominator. Now, why do we need an x down here? Because over on this fraction, there is no x in the numerator or the denominator, so we have to get rid of the x, right? So how can we get rid of an x? Well, if you divide uh, an x by an x, right, anything divided by itself is 1. So these factors can cross-cancel. That's why the correct answer is 36x. But uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit more of a thorough review here. So here is our problem. Now, in mathematics, when you see a fraction and it's equal to another fraction, by definition, this is what we call a proportion. And we need to review some uh, characteristics about a proportion because uh, in algebra especially, there are a ton of problems that have to deal with proportions. So a proportion, again, by definition, is uh, two equal fractions. So let's take a look at uh, one fraction that's equal to another fraction, something simple like this. All right, so we have the fraction 1 half, and this is equal to another fraction 5 over 10, or 4 over 8. doesn't make a difference. But let's just kind of look at the properties of a proportion. And the main property that I want you to know is something called the cross product. Now, there are other properties of proportions, but the cross product... Uh, is basically the one main uh, property that will pretty much solve most or um, almost all proportion problems. Now, the cross product uh, is, as a matter of fact, I'm just going to write this out, cross product. You're going to uh, crosswise, okay, we're kind of doing the diagonals here. Diagonals here. We're going to do multiplication. Product means the result of multiplication. So we're going to cross multiply. So 2 times 5 here is going to be equal to 1 times 10. So when you have a proportion, the cross products the cross products are equal. Okay, so 2 times 5 of course is 10, 1 times 10 is 10. So this is how you solve proportion problems. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, use the cross product to take a look at this uh, question. So here is our problem. Okay, we have 3 fourths is equal to 27 uh, x over some denominator. But what uh, happens if we just kind of get rid of this x here for a second, and let's suppose this is our question, all right? Well, if this is our question, then we're looking for the denominator of this simple por uh, proportion, and you can represent any number that you're looking for with a simple variable. So let's go ahead and just call that variable an x. Now, we're not solving the actual problem right now because we have a 27x, but let's just kind of... Uh, do uh, kind of a simpler version of the problem and get at least the denominator. All right, so we have 3 fourths is equal to 27 over x. So we can use the cross product to solve for the denominator. Okay, so here is this uh, proportion. So we're going to use the cross product here. So 3 times x is 3x, and 4 times 27 is 4 times 27, which, of course, is 108. So all we have to do is solve this basic algebraic equation. 3x is equal to 108. So uh, to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides by 3. 108 divided by 3 is 36. All right, so that is the denominator. We kind of already knew that, right? So uh, down here, we need a 36 to get a fraction that's going to be 3 fourths. But uh, this is where we're at so far in the problem. We still need to address this x. So how can we get rid of this x? Well, of course, I already kind of uh, went through it, but let's go through it again. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do this and have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your support to reach as many people as I possibly can on YouTube. And uh, really, that is the goal of my channel, is to help as many people as possible. And what I'm trying to do is teach math in a very clear and understandable way so all people can understand mathematics. So at least that's my goal, and hopefully I'm doing uh, reasonably well. But if you like this content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out on YouTube. And uh, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest math videos. Now, I just want to show you real quick uh, what you will find when you go to tcmathacademy.com. So there you'll find uh, full-on, complete middle school, high school, and college-level math courses. So if you're taking a course and you need additional instruction, definitely check out my full main math courses. You'll also find a ton of test prep courses. 
So if you have to take some sort of certification exam or prepare for some other type of specialized test, I have great customized test, test prep courses. I also have full and complete homeschool math courses for middle and high school mathematics. Also, I have an excellent basic math course called my Math Foundations course. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that course, you can find a link in the description of this video. And then one of my most popular courses is something called Math Skills Rebuilder. And uh, that course is for um, basically designed for people. It's pretty much self-explanatory. People who have been away from school for many, many years that just want to rebuild their math skills. In this course, I start with basic math and kind of build up uh, from there going into uh, algebra, geometry, and some, even some trigonometry and basic probability and statistics. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this prom. There is not that much to do. So what we've done at this point is figure out the denominator. Okay, so we just kind of uh, took away this x just temporarily, and then we solved this proportion, right, by using the cross product. So we know that the, denom the denominator has to be 36, but we have to get rid of this x here, right, because we don't have an x over here. So if we just pl uh, put x right there, and our denominator is 36x, well, what happens? Well, the x's cross cancel, okay? Because these are what we call like factors. So if you're reducing a fraction, let's say 10 over 20, what's going on here? Well, what's going on is that we have like factors in the numerator and the denominator. So this is uh, the same thing as two times five, 10, right? We can think of it that way. And then 20 is the same thing as two times 10. Now, that's one way we can look at it, or we can look at it as 10 as uh, 10 being equal to 2 times 5 or 20 equal to 4 times 5, all right? So, of course, we can fully simplify this even more, but here, 5s, the 5s are uh, like factors, right? This is being separated by multiplication, so we can cross-cancel. Same thing here. This is 27 times x, so in algebra, 27x means 27 times x, so if we have a 36 times x right here, these are like factors, and that's what we need in order to simplify this fraction, 27x over what? Well, 36x, the x's go away. 27 over 36 can be reduced or simplified down to the fraction 3 fourths. Okay, so a simple little example problem on uh, proportions. This is a huge topic in mathematics, and if you need help on this, uh, I would actually check out like my pre-algebra course or maybe my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.